It looks like Joe Biden chose Kamala Harris for his VP, which is very important because CNN is reporting ready to step in if and when Biden decides to step aside, and NBC News is saying then to lead this nation starting in January 2021. But any serious person that isn't completely brainwashed by mass media or brainwashed by their hate for President Trump should have been able to figure out by this point Joe Biden is not fit to lead the country. I know it, you know it, we all know it. Now that CNN and NBC News told you you're allowed to think that, the people that don't think for themselves but have news media Media think for them are finally getting it. So let's talk about Kamala Harris. I know her name is Kamala, not Kamala now, because I saw somebody call Tucker Carlson racist for thinking so. CNN was outraged. All the things going on in the world said they wanted you to know that someone out there had mispronounced Kamala Harris's name. I want you to listen to how Tucker Carlson, that the best he could do was to somehow mangle her name. Listen. Just tell Kamala Harris what to say, and she will say it. That is the whole point of Kamala Harris. I call him Schmucker Carlson, but it's an ethnic term, so he might not understand. <laughs> but then at the end, it's laughable because he's like, or whatever. So it, it's like, no, it's not whatever. It is about you having to finally face what you have done to this country, to black people, to black women. There's nothing or whatever about this moment. <laughs> About 50 people came up to me in South Dakota over the last few days and told me they loved my videos. Most of them couldn't pronounce my name and didn't even know it, even though they were huge supporters. I know that's because Anomaly is a hard name to spell and pronounce. I never thought to call them racist or sexist, but that's because I'm not a complete liar. Anyway, it's an interesting transition from Kamala Harris last year, I believe Biden accusers, basically suggesting she thinks that he's a rapist, to now being his vice president. Because you have to believe all women until it's politically convenient to not believe those women, then you don't believe those women. You're not believing all women, you're just believing women that fit the Democratic Party agenda. If it doesn't, then you don't. So of course it's not all women, it's a total lie. Just like Kamala Harris is the perfect shield for them to say everything is racist and sexist. Anything against her, it's racist, it's sexist. They love doing that. They love using women, children, ethnic groups, and tragedies to exploit the nation's emotions, political correctness, censorship, and push their wicked agenda forward without you being able to combat it. And I know they don't actually care about the ethnicity or the gender that they claim to, because look how they treat Terry Crews for simply just slightly disagreeing with their agenda. Look how they treated the Seattle police chief, a black woman who resigned because they're disrespecting the entire forest and the entire community, making it less safe. So do you get what I'm saying? I would have more respect for them if they were honest. We like people who agree with us. We like black women who agree with us, but they're so deceptive and cowardly that their ideas don't make much sense alone, so they use women and children and other people to advance them in the public sphere. So on that note, Kamala is a perfect fit. It's kind of funny because she's a top cop, as New York Times puts it, policing the police. She had a big stint as attorney general, and nobody laid it out more perfect than Tulsi Gabbard. Now, Senator Harris says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president, but I'm deeply concerned about this record. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. When you were in a position to make a difference and an impact in these people's lives, you did not. And worse yet, in the case of those who were on death row, innocent people, you actually blocked evidence from being revealed that would have freed them until you were forced to do so. There is no excuse for that. And the people who suffered under your reign as prosecutor, oh, you owe them an apology. Tulsi Gabbard was a veteran, well-spoken, very pretty, a woman, a minority, and somebody that was palatable to Republicans and conservatives. But the media treated her like a super villain out of a Disney movie for her crime of destroying Kamala Harris with truth, also her views on regime change war and the war in Syria. She knows a lot, the media hates it, they give you these Democrats and Republicans that are so relatable on television, but they all seem to share the same war agenda. Isn't that interesting? So the crowd that wants to abolish and defund the police is now getting the top cop. 
How are they going to finesse this one? I know what the Democrats are trying to do. They don't want to lose the moderate Democrat vote who obviously doesn't want to defund or abolish the police, but they also don't want to lose the culture, the youth, the progressives, the socialists, and the communists. So they're trying to pretend like we're going to reform the police, but we're not going to defund them. They're playing the middle field. They know if they lose either of those groups, it's game over. But both those groups have almost totally opposite views on what to do. Good luck finessing that one. Luckily for them, a lot of that crowd doesn't have any moral integrity whatsoever and hates Trump so much they'll probably do anything. Here's Sean King a few years ago. I'll be frank and tell you two Democrats that I am 99% sure I won't be supporting primarily because of their dismal history on criminal justice reform over the course of their entire careers, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. They both helped build and advance mass incarceration. That's true. But this year he says, that's it for me. I am incredibly proud to see a brilliant black woman, an HBCU grad chosen as a vice presidential nominee. I've done political work my whole life. It's rarely things dreams are made of. Kamala Harris is the most progressive VP nominee in American history. I guess that crowd really is that easy to fool. And people can change, but it's not like he's changed his views on mass incarceration. He has the exact same politics and racial worldview. I guess he just doesn't care anymore. And a lot of celebrities like Charlemagne, Diddy, and Timbaland were pushing Joe Biden to have a black woman as the vice president. Isn't that interesting? The crowd that always complains that other people have racial preference literally has racial preference. It's almost like the person that they're trying to stop and fight in the world is themselves. I guess they've never heard of content of character over race or being the change you want to see in the world. Well, they don't have to because they're going to get paid by big corporations to do that. Just as long as they don't go out of line. Nick Cannon did recently where he had to go on a world apology to where he's doing book reports like he's back in middle school. Relax, Nick Cannon. Don't go there. It's wild how they love all women but treat Kellyanne Conway like complete dirt. They care about black voices, just not Kanye West. They treat him like dirt for the crime of talking about conservative issues, Nikola Tesla, free energy, buying land, and not being a total degenerate. If only he just rapped about murdering your neighbors and popping pills, the media wouldn't care. What good people they are, right? And everything is anti-Semitic to the media, except for when they viciously and falsely attack Stephen Miller at every turn, simply for supporting the president and not being a total Bolshevik. Anyways, I digress. So Kamala Harris, the top cop pandering to the crowd that hates the cops. Snopes said, did US Senator Kamala Harris' ancestors own slaves in Jamaica? Rating unproven. Uh-oh. You know when it's unproven or mixed, that means they don't have enough information to say that it's false. Usually if you know who Snopes is, that's not looking good for Kamala. Let's read the actual article. It's talking about Kamala's father. In Jamaica Global article, Harris claimed to be descended from the 19th century planter and slave owner Hamilton Brown. He wrote, my roots go back within my lifetime to my paternal grandmother, Miss Krishi. Christina Brown, descendant of Hamilton Brown, who is on record as plantation and slave owner and founder of Brownstown. And to my maternal grandmother, Miss Iris, the Harris name comes from my paternal grandfather, Joseph Alexander Harris, landowner and agricultural produce exporter. Let's scroll down. There's no doubt that Hamilton Brown was a prominent plantation owner in Jamaica during the first half of the 19th century, owned slaves. Okay, so I guess black voices really, really matter until that black voice says that they descend from slaves and then it's unproven. We're gonna believe them unless they write about their ancestry, then we're gonna call them a liar and say, mm, it's unproven, we're not really sure. Wouldn't that just destroy the narrative? Once again, it really doesn't matter because all they do is lie. All they do is use race and gender as a shield. They can go from here to here in two seconds, and most of their audience wouldn't even realize it or care. Which is why you see in major liberal cities, they're burning, they're looting, they're destroying. The media and these politicians are essentially making excuses for it, and they're building a generation who thinks like this. I care if somebody decides to loot a Gucci or a Macy's or a Nike, because that makes sure that that person eats. That makes sure that that person has clothes. That's reparations. That is reparations. Anything they want to take, take it because these businesses have insurance. They're going to get their money back. My people aren't getting anything. Mm. 
Most sane, rational people don't want that, right? Unfortunately, the ACLU has gone totally insane. Breaking, we're calling for the dismantling of the Department of Homeland Security. I have a good friend whose father works for the Department of Homeland Security, and he's a big progressive Bernie Sanders supporter, and he was telling me he didn't like that Trump seemed like he might defund the Department of Homeland Security. But now the progressive left wants to completely abolish it. We'll see if this changes people's mind or not. The New York Times, yes, we mean literally abolish the police because reform won't happen. So amidst crime surges, burning, looting, domestic terrorism, complete chaos because Democratic politicians are far too weak to handle these degenerates, they're just gonna get rid of the police. If you wanna live in a third world country, you should vote for them. If not, maybe take your head out of mass media, the culture that is brainwashing people to be completely backwards, and take a real hard look at this election and what they're trying to sell you. Even social media is corrupt. Why do you think they banned my live stream for 30 days? The Hill, Twitter bans Trump campaign until it deletes tweet with COVID-19 misinformation. He was trying to tell people that they shouldn't be afraid to send their kids to school. What a horrible crime. They just pump fear, 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 and if you try to stop the pumping fear, they attack you. But weirdly enough, Twitter says coronavirus disinformation spread by Chinese officials does not violate the rules. So social media is more favorable to communist China than they are to the United States. Don't people get it yet or no? But they'll still try to sell Kamala as this nice lady who's making India and Jamaica so happy. Uh, nobody made India more happy than President Trump when he went and spoke there to one of the biggest crowds he's ever had, which was of course downplayed and lied about by the media. So we'll see what happens. Overall, it's a complete mess. They're trying to sell you Joe Biden, who clearly seems incapable of leading, who even liberal media is now admitting he probably won't be there, whose career is also responsible for mass incarceration. That 1994 crime bill, um, it, it did contribute to mass incarceration in our country. Um, it, it encouraged and, and was the first time that we had a federal um, three strikes law. It, it funded uh, the, the building of more prisons in the states. With Kamala Harris, the top cop, pandering to the crowd that wants to get rid of the police, hates the police, and doesn't want mass incarceration. President Trump actually did something about mass incarceration. He passed the First Step Act, but nobody cares. It's all emotions, it's all lies, it's all complete media manipulation, and people are just so brainwashed and angry and hateful that they'll pretty much fall for anything at this point, I guess. So as they try to balance the abolish police and keep police crowd, you're gonna see Republicans attack them at different angles. On one hand, Republicans are saying they wanna abolish the police, they wanna defund the police, they're gonna be too weak to lead, which is partially true, but then they're gonna say, but look, they're responsible for mass incarceration. She's a top cop. She went too hard. So the messaging is skewed in both parties. They're both flip-flopping and saying they're doing too much. They're not doing enough because both parties really want to pander to get the black vote. I guess I understand it's a little bit cringy. And overall, personally, I think there's better strategies. But let me know what you think. God bless you guys. I appreciate you watching. If you'd like to support my videos, I have a Patreon. I have a donor box. I have a PayPal. And I'm going to find more creative ways to do that since Facebook is banning my live streams. Not not helping whatsoever, claiming to be helping me. And I wouldn't be surprised if they censored me further because I'm uplifting, I'm accurate, I'm not fearful. Pretty much everything that they hate and are the opposite of. And since I'm doing better than major corporations with massive budgets, I wouldn't be surprised if they keep censoring me and attempting to hide my content. Thanks for watching, have a good day, and I'll be back with more videos.